To the circle at Kismet. Today we are doing a reading to find out a little more about your future love, soulmate, twin flame or spouse and we're using the past to try and gain that guidance. What better way to dip into the past than to use the mystical romanticism of the Victorian era? So here we have a selection of four silver hairbrushes. Each is slightly different and comes accompanied with a selection of cards and a special letter written in Old English style from your potential significant other. If you're not used to doing pick a pile readings or you've not done one before, simply pause the video, close your eyes, take a few deep breaths to centre yourself and then when you're ready open your eyes and see which of the options your heart is drawn to. So without further ado let's take a closer look at the options. Option number one Option number two. Option number three. And option number four. This reading is timeless. Trust that the time you find it is when it may apply to you. This is a collective reading and will not be for everyone. Take what resonates and leave the rest for someone else. I often get asked about the cards I use and sometimes some of the props. I always try to detail them in the description box below where I can, so please take a look if you're interested. I also have an Etsy shop and will be listing new items over the coming weeks and months, so keep a watchful eye on that too. If you enjoy the channel and any of the videos, please give them a like, a share or consider subscribing. We have a wealth of ideas yet to explore and this helps the channel grow and reach a wider audience. Timestamps will be down below in the description box. I'll see you at your reading. If you picked option number one, here's your reading. For those of you who picked pile one, here are your cards. And we're going to start with the letter. So... Let's just read what's inside. My darling you, as I sit perched at my desk, ink well poised, paper hungry to absorb and in turn convey my thoughts, I ponder the books I've read, the romance, interaction and destiny that draws forth to unite those lucky enough to be loved. I am in awe of such a blissful connection and dare to dream that thee may be thy soulmate. The clock ticks slowly in the background, keeping me grounded in the now. But our future is so vivid in my dreams and in my mind, thou art so tantalisingly close. I yearn for distance and time to depart and allow us to move forth together so our story can truly begin. We wait for our breathtaking romance to commence, our passion to ignite and to embrace our future and all it holds for us. I am so looking forward to our wondrous days together and embarking on our own adventure of life. Until you're in my arms, I send all my undying love and three kisses. I think that's a lovely way to start the reading. And now on to the cards. So the first two cards represent you. And they are number 26, Transformation. And number 34, Abracadabra. You know what you want normally, so you go out and get it and try your best to attain it. Something has held you back recently though. It's either something that you're facing at the moment or a demon that you've beaten. This transformation is remarkable and it is created wholly by the fact that you've not been happy in yourself. You've thought a lot about what makes you happy and equally you've done some shadow work on the parts of you that you feel are less lovable 
or you would deem as negative. You've also stepped away from things that don't suit you anymore, and that may include love too. If you feel that you're not in the greatest place to share yourself, then you're not ready to meet somebody. But after all the work that you've done recently, you are now ready and waiting for love to appear and for that perfect match and the spark that it brings. The next two cards are about your potential suitor. We have number 36, House of Flowers. And we have number nine, Rose Garden. This is a person that's very nurturing. Whilst they are strong and resilient, they know how to empathise, to look after and often tend to the hardest of situations and people that life has guided into their fold. They have an eye for beauty and like aesthetically pleasing things. There is a part of them that wishes to be creative, but it is not something pressing enough to fight to the forefront unless something coaxes them or an opportunity actually comes and knocks on their front door, which is fairly unlikely. They respect different ideas, but can be accused of being quite staid or blinkered in their opinion or focus. They need to do more to open up to new things, especially when it's something that piques their interest and gets them thinking about a new path. The next two cards are the essence of the energy that's around when you meet and you have patience and playfulness. There's an essence of young, fun, playfulness that this relationship carries. A feeling of being free and just enjoying life. This may be a relationship that sees you as firm friends first for a short while. Be patient as when, as when they are ready that to move the relationship to the next stage. They will make the shift that you would like to see happen. I also wanted to get some intuitive ideas as to where you might meet this person. And places you could meet include in nature, um, anything connected to animals, of some kind of fashion event, a magic show or performance of some kind, which also includes psychic demonstrations. There's some kind of link to butterflies for some of you. And for, for one of you, there's a connection to chess or when you're deciding what next move to make, they will then appear. For one person, there's a connection to a carousel horse. And for a few of you, it may not be where you meet, but one of your first dates will be to a market, to some kind of ice cream parlour, or even a beach where you will actually sit on the shore. The next two cards um, relate to how they feel about you when they actually meet you, when they actually first get to know you or first get to see you. And you have family and secrets. They love the way you are with those around you. They see with your family, friends or those close to you and they're in awe of how you know exactly the right thing to say or do in any situation. There's also a secretive allure around you that captivates their interest and keeps them wanting to know more about you. The next two cards are any obstacles you may come across and you have loving strategy and guilty relationship. There may be something about you as a couple that may raise eyebrows. There could be a large age gap, or maybe your families are from different cultures or backgrounds. But whilst this doesn't bother either of you, it may be a point of discussion for those around you. Don't pay too much attention to idle gossip, but do listen to the opinions of others. You don't necessarily have to take it on board, but the input of those around you that you trust and that you know really well is worth investing in, even if it is just to see how others see your union. The next group of cards is how your relationship is likely to pan out. And we have Temperance, Six of Cups, The Magician, The Ten of Swords and the Fool. There's a beautifully young, frivolous feel about this relationship. There doesn't appear to be any major issues holding you back. 
and only a wealth of choices and opportunities ahead to be explored. On the slightly negative side, a connection like this can be immature and lack stability on the long term. This may be a relationship that starts off slowly but gains momentum. Equally, if it goes too fast and gathers too much pace, it can become derailed. The relationship will endure clear phases. Some will draw you together, others will force you apart. But whatever the situation, it will make you stronger both as a couple and individually and will teach you invaluable lessons for the rest of your life together. And then last but not least, we have in the cards, um, some cards for the outcome or that's the eight of diamonds. The king of hearts. And the ten of clubs. There's a high level of attention to detail between you. You both have high ideals, which can lead to disappointment if the dreams and desires are not always easily attained. Make realistic targets together and let them grow from humble beginnings. Achievements will be sweeter if you have worked on them together and see them evolve into fruition. And then last but not least, our Mystic Owl Inkwell that's been on the table for your reading, holds a final few secrets. Normally he would contain ink, but today he contains some secret scrolls and a gemstone. Okay, so the scrolls in this case, if we can just open them up, say, turn it the right way around. Generous and gallant. So that's the first one. The next one we have says, Never dismiss your gut reactions. So that's a little bit of advice. And last but not least, on the scrolls, they have very expressive hands. Hopefully that's a bit of an indication as to what to look out for. And last but not least, the gemstone that's been selected for you is an amethyst, which is an all-round good stone to have. It's one that is normally found in most people's collections, not only because of its beautiful colour, but also the fact that it's so calming and relaxing. Great for meditation work, helps sleep, just helps you really take a step back and take stock of a situation anyway i hope you've enjoyed this reading if you did give us a like share and consider subscribing and i'll see you in the next one if you picked option number two here's your reading for those of you who picked poll two here are your cards and we're going to start with a letter from your significant other so here's your envelope Take a look at what's inside and it reads to the one and only you I am humbled to be able to interact with you in this manner pardon my brevity time is short and I have so much I wish to convey it feels like an eternity to find you to rekindle the romance love and passion we have shared in many past lives now though it seems finding thee is harder than ever I hear your voice in the whispers of the wind within the trees and your touch in the ripples of the waves on the shore. I see beauty throughout nature, but none as pure or as exquisite as yours. Forget-me-nots remind me of you. Thou hath a special place in my heart for you. And I yearn for what we had once more. Love is not defined by time or space, places or objects, but souls who recognise each other without introduction. A deep knowing, a longing for what is raw and true what once was and can be again my heart is yours it has always been and will always be until we meet once more all my love and three kisses so that's a lovely way to start the reading and now on to the cards the first two cards relate to you and they are number 44 stranded 
and number 41, Home in the Sky. You're in a phase where you're lacking direction. Maybe you feel depleted or maybe you've just attained a goal and now are in limbo looking for the next. But whatever the reason, you are not your usual go-getting self. You used to pride yourself in knowing what you want from life and even having had certain parts of it meticulously planned, but for some reason you're pausing, taking stock and refocusing. You have a small core, family or friend base who are completely loyal as you are to them and you would do anything for them as they would for you. Your friends and colleagues are about to expand. Be open to new people and experiences as this is how your next focal point will appear. Ideas you harbour need to be shared but you must be aware that not everyone is listening to be of help to you so consider your choices wisely. The next two cards relate to their personality and we have number 42 change of seasons and 47 my dear friend this person is required to have various facets to their personality they need to have different traits for individual purposes maybe they have a few jobs or a juggling home study and work where for each they need to have an individual guise Whatever the reason, this person is often in a spin. They fear if they drop the busy lifestyle and keeping everything in the air that they may not be able to pick up the pace again. They like praise, enjoy seeing the fruits of their labour and are excellent with their hands. They are happiest burrowing their head into a new exciting project. They don't have the greatest sense of time awareness, so be prepared to have them arrive late, miss appointments or to forget anniversaries. But this is just part of their personality and it's nothing that can't be rearranged or sorted with a calendar and a schedule. The next two cards are a little bit about the essence that's going to be the energy when you meet. We have expression and wisdom. There's a wonderful sense of free expression between you. Communications are strong. You can even gauge how the other person feels with pure gut reactions. There's equally a common respect of knowledge and wisdom. You have an array of skills between you, and between you, you can face almost anything. I also wanted to try and get an idea of where you may meet um, intuitively. And a couple of the ideas that came to mind were places with lots of windows a party where very few people have met before, at a historical site or tour, in a shop that sells textiles, fashion or homeware, near a broadcasting event or concert. There's also a potential of meeting either near a boat or on a boat. Um, friends are highlighted for, for introducing people as blind dates um, in this connection. And for one of you, you will meet near an elaborate fish tank or aquarium. The next cards give an idea of how they're going to feel about you when they meet you and we have learning and passion. You'll have several connecting factors which you are passionate about. Maybe you will enjoy learning a new hobby together or it could be that one of you possesses a skill that the other would like to learn, so you evoke the role of teacher and student. There is an essence of pride that they feel about being with you. They are honoured to be by your side and to be seen as your significant other. The next two cards are any obstacles you may uh, come, come into contact with. And we have hope for return and unjustified suspicions. There may be a few hiccups in the early stages of the relationship. Suspicions and creating scenarios to fill in the blanks is not the best idea. There could be some interference of an ex, yours or theirs, and this can see a temporary pause in the relationship or a withdrawal and distance between you until the situation can be resolved or can pass. 
The next batch of cards is how the relationship will pan out. We have the Three of Pentacles, the Page of Cups, the Four of Wands, the Six of Wands, and the World. One of you may have younger people or children around you. That could be family or some, somewhere you work or friends, but this keeps your attitude young and fast moving. There may be a place that you meet or someone that stands out as special where you revisit over time and create memories around it. At the beginning of the relationship, work or study may take precedence. It's important to stay focused on your individual goals as this will give you a greater opportunity of attaining what you want and giving you a step up as a couple in years to come. You may find in time there will be an opportunity to work together or to work closely. This could be for a company or for a charity or even for somebody that you both know. You make a great team but remember to switch off from work for some quality time to relax as a couple. And then lastly we have some summary cards. So we have the Two of Clubs and the Queen of Diamonds. This relationship, when it gains momentum, can be a world beater. Be aware of a forceful female energy that can take focus and time away from your time together. If this relationship gains pace and you feel that you are naturally growing together, it may not be too long before you find yourself making things more official in a long-term capacity. And then last but not least, our Mystic Owl Inkwell that's been on the table for your reading holds a final few secrets. Normally he would contain ink, but today he contains some secret scrolls and a gemstone. So let's open your scrolls. The first one says their love of music has hidden depths. The next scroll says they are clever and creative. And the last scroll says the pieces of the puzzle are falling into place so that's a couple of traits and some information there for you in the search of who this may be the gemstone that's been selected for you is the clear quartz it's a fantastic stone for clarity if you're looking for answers for something if you need to relax or meditate, it's just a great stone for clearing your mind and reorganising, reassessing. It's a, a stone that I think everybody has a go-to stone and that probably is the clear quartz because it is so strong, yet it is so simple. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this reading. If you did, give us a like, share and consider subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one. If you picked option number three, here's your reading. If you pick pile three, here are your cards. And we're going to start with the letter from your significant other. So let's just see what the letter has to say. To the one who has stolen my heart, I cannot convey my pleasure in contacting you today. All the things I wish to say cannot be contained in a single letter, but as we find ourselves apart, it will be a delightful prelude to our meeting. Recently, I have been feeling rather lost and lonely. I would adore a companion to enhance my life. Yet the void, I feel, is still within me. The hollow echoes deafening loud, deafeningly loud, reminding me that however complete my life may seem on the outside, the inside is a different story. 
I long to feel your hand in mine and for me to never have to let you go, for us to face whatever the world puts in our path together and to talk, laugh, dance and make memories that will last a lifetime. Life has so much more to offer us but waits for thee to meet so thou can enjoy together in splendour. Until I can fulfil my greeting in person, I send you so much love and reassurance that my heart is yours and only yours, and that I will wait for you, my love, until it, uh, it is our time. All my love and three kisses. So that's a lovely way to start the reading. And now on to the cards. The first two relate to your personality. And we have number 51 to the moon and back. And number 33, weaving flowers. You have a light and carefree nature on the surface. You are honest, helpful and loving. However, beneath this lies someone who is sometimes anxious or feels that your true feelings are suppressed. You have an immense talent for picking up on the feelings of others, but this can lead you to connecting with their energy and bringing it into your own aura, and this can be depleting. You have always strived for the best, but you can feel helpless if you do not attain your goals. Rather than making the best of a bad situation or changing your plans, you may be prone to overthinking and planning, yet not actually manifesting a solution, and therefore get stuck in a phase or situation for longer than required. The next cards relate to their personality, and we have number two, Liberty, number 14, The Art of Seduction, and number 50, The Observer. This person is fiercely independent and is self-made, brimming with motivation. They have all the right words to say and can be charming and flattering as they know it wins brownie points and is generally well favoured. They may have been accused of being a Casanova or a player, not because they have had a string of heartbroken exes in their wake, but more so that they ooze a charm that just captivates, or words that soothe even the spikiest of personalities. They are strong organisers, often have a wide circle of friends, gathered over years from all areas of their lives. If you look a little deeper though, you will see that many of those who protest to be close are actually just peripheral and the type, the true close circle is considerably smaller than it appears on the surface. The next couple of cards is the essence of the energy that will be around when you meet each other. And we have reflection, centering and dreams. When you meet, the first instinct will be to look within and reflect. You have both sought each other, but in reality you question if this is the one. The heights of the highs can be earth shattering. The lows can feel like a sinkhole you just cannot escape. But finding a happy medium is a challenge that you both seem content to locate. So I just wanted to intuitively pick up on some of the options of places that you could meet. And this is what I was getting. Um, some of you will meet on a windy day. Um, for others, it will be a place where letters are written or posted. There may be a connection to young people or toys or dolls. Near an impressive building or a gothic arch or gate. You might meet at a night class, a meditation group, band practice, somewhere where you either come together as a team or where you learn a new skill or share it with others. And for one of you, you will meet where bubbles are blown. The next couple of cards are how they feel about you when they meet you or when they start to get to know you. We have envy, joy and anger. So this was a strange combination of cards and they all shot out together. Envy, joy and anger depicts how a collection of emotions can bubble to the surface when they think of you. Joy is how they feel about you in general. There's a sense of envy. It could be jealousy as you share your time with others or because your life seems so much more in order than theirs and the fact that you 
have a pattern which continues after that you've met them. There's a certain sense of anger when they realise that they could have met you sooner and to a certain extent they wonder how they can captivate your attention enough to retain you in their lives. The next two cards are about any obstacles that may come across. We have the game of seduction and we have deceptive promise. There may be accusations of flirting, seduction or movement towards others in a way that you feel is led by attraction. It's not unusual to feel protective over someone you are in a relationship with, but be careful about innocent situations being depicted into something else which can place a wedge between you. Also ensure that promises and details you discuss are more than just ideas before excitement prevails. There could be a glut of amazing plans not coming to fruition due to a lack of backing beyond the ideas stage. The next batch of cards is how the relationship pans out. We have the Ace of Wands, the Six of Pentacles, the Four of Cups, the Ace of Swords, And the Ten of Pentacles. This relationship can be a little up and down like a seesaw. When you act aloof, getting on with your life and are self-sufficient, you'll be a prize catch. If you're loving and caring, it could be misread as being needy or clingy and they think that you are dependent on them. Then you could find there is a distance appearing between you in your relationship. They like to maintain their independence, but equally want to know that you are in their camp and love them unconditionally. They are yet to realise that love is a two-way street, and individuals represented by these cards are in varying stages of getting to know what they want from a relationship, how to get it, and most importantly how to make it work, as well as what is expected of them in return. This relationship is one of the biggest learning curves in their romantic lives. And then lastly on the cards, we have a couple of summary cards. And we have the Six of Diamonds and the Five of Diamonds. This relationship is not going to be the easiest to be a part of. It will take compromise and adjustment of goals, but perseverance and harmonious outlook will see this become, see this become something that will make you stronger together and both of you will learn from. There's some eye-opening lessons that will not only challenge you, but change your outlook forever. And then last but not least, our Mystic Owl Inkwell that's been on the table for your reading holds a final few secrets. Normally he would contain ink, but today he contains some secret scrolls and a gemstone. So let's have a look at your scrolls. The first one says sporty and secretive. That's number one. The second scroll says mishaps are not all negative. So a little bit of advice there. And the last scroll says they have a kind heart and a sweet tooth so that's some information there and some helpful hints so the gemstone that's been selected for you is the tiger's eye which is a fantastic iridescent stone it's got great chatoyancy as it catches the light shows lots of different layers within the crystal and i think that indicates what it's for i think the tiger's eye allows you to take away the layers get to the bottom of situations and to know what the true meaning of things are or what your true focus should be tiger's eye is also associated with luck and abundance so it's also a good all-round stone to have in a collection anyway i hope you enjoyed this reading if you did give us a like share and consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one. If you picked option number four, 
Here's your reading. And for those of you who pick number four, here's your cards. And we're going to start off with the letter from your significant other. So let's just have a look and see what they say. My beloved, my heart dances at the thought of you reading my words. I am afraid I do not know where to begin, but trust this finds you in good stead. Upon strolling in a wistful garden recently, I perchance upon a beautiful rose. Its scent was simply divine, the colour in soft pastel hues, and the petals so enchantingly delicate, it was truly perfect in every way, unique to the sea of other blooms. If I speak the truth, it captivated my attention from the moment it caught my gaze. How I would have loved to present it to thee. Rest assured, I will remember this most exquisite delight, and in time, when we walk together, entwined in life, I will love and nurture thee as thou art a flower. Our union will grow and in turn bloom as we evolve stronger together. Deeper in love, we will become one. Send in my warmest wishes and tender thoughts of you, my love, and three kisses. I think that's a lovely way to start the reading and next we go on to the cards the first two cards um, relate to your personality and we have 39 my home is my castle and 23 the gift that's a lovely way to start the reading um, now we go on to the cards and the first two cards are about your personality and you have number six, listen, and number 23, the gift. You are an open-hearted person, giving people the benefit of the doubt, allowing people more chances than they deserve, and sometimes falling foul of your own kindness. Sometimes you have questioned your choices when it is really others that have taken advantage of your caring disposition. You dislike conflict, but do not run from problems, rather looking for ways to find a solution, or for those to see your perspective, or if not, to move on when things fall short of your expectations. You are a good listener, and your friends and family respect your advice. You have the ability to harness and cultivate your psychic talents, and often have thoughts, dreams or feelings that prove this, but you need to quiet your mind to listen to this and to learn more. The next couple of cards relate to their personality and they have number 35, A Long Way Home, 43, Secrets and 39, My Home is My Castle. This person has a busy mind. I may even say if you stepped into their thoughts, they would be somewhat chaotic to those not used to their method of dealing with things. They thrive on being needed, fast moving change and anything that stretches them. If they find a comfort zone, they need to extend it. If they find a boundary, they need to push it. If they hit a brick wall, they need to tear it down. It's as if they have some deep rooted point to prove, but realistically they are hunting for something that makes them feel secure, that stops the ever changing need for a fresh start and that just calms their mind enough to relax. Their home will be important, they may be a traveller or someone who has not put down solid foundations as yet, but this will be a main priority in due course in life, and when achieved, they will take great pride in all it stands for, as well as who and what is welcomed into this amazing inner circle. The next two cards are the essence of energy that will be around you at the time when you meet, and you have protection. And awakening. When you meet there will be a feeling of a new start, an awakening. Things will seem like they begin to fit into place and some situations that have gone wrong in the past will suddenly feel like they had a hidden plan behind their failure. There will be an essence of protection. At first neither of you may feel ready to release your innermost thoughts or feelings to each other. You will be protecting your hearts but as trust and love evolves, it will become apparent that you have a fond, protective dual commitment over each other, which enhances and grows in potential from strength to strength as time goes on. 
I wanted to ask intuitively if there's any guidance on places that you may meet or where you may have your first date or things that will become apparent to both of you. So I've got an orchard or where fresh fruit is sold or picked around books at a performance, either professional or amateur. At a time where one of you is wearing red. Somewhere where you're surrounded by photographs, portraits or paintings. At a festival or concert or some kind of religious celebration. When you are feeling at your most vulnerable is also something that stood out. A connection to exotic plants or birds. Somewhere where your favourite drink is served. For one of you, you will meet near an impressive chandelier. And for another, a locked wooden box will be prominent. The next couple of cards are how they feel about you when they actually meet you and start getting to know you. And we have patience. And chaos. There's a calming influence you bring to a relationship. You're a very balanced person and to someone who juggles relentlessly, this is a magical revelation. You keep ordering your life with meticulous ease, even if you don't feel like you do. This is a meeting of opposites, but you both admire the other for their diverse approach to things and you can learn a lot from each other as time unfolds. The next couple of cards are any obstacles that you may come across. We have the Seven of Hearts and we have the Five of Hearts. There may be a sense of disappointment if things move slowly in this union. A sense of frustration may sweep over you when you realise how truly different you are. Don't confuse this with incompatibility. You were sent to each other to learn some major life lessons and this is all part of life's transitions planned for you both. The next batch of cards are how the relationship may pan out. We have the Three of Wands, the Nine of Wands, the Seven of Swords, the Hermit and the Wheel of Fortune. There is a roller coaster of experiences here to be a part of. There will be highs and lows, but you will learn how to ride the waves and most importantly to be drawn together and work as a team when things go wrong. One of you has strong empathy. The other has been challenged to absorb this ability. This will be a game changer and will lead to a release of a lot of pent up anger. It will also give an end to chapters that have been left open with feelings of frustration. It will also lead to an energy shift that will make a huge impact in the long run on both of you. Beware of secrets and suppressing honesty, as this can cause problems and trust issues with your relationship developing on an unstable plane from the outset. And then lastly for the cards, I've picked a couple of summary cards. And we have Unexpected Emotion and Romantic Expectation. Whatever your romantic expectations, this will exceed or change your outlook for the better. Love is born in many guises, but what it becomes is solely down to those in the union. And then last but not least, our Mystic Owl Inkwell that's been on the table for your reading holds a final few secrets. Normally he would contain ink. Today he contains some secret scrolls and a gemstone. And the stone that's been selected for you is K2. A fantastic stone for past life work, for regression, for anything where you're trying to deal with something in the past. Be it trauma, any hurt or pain. Trying to let go of something that maybe you felt you're not ready to let go of. It's great at facing the future, having dealt with the past. So it's a stone really of looking back and healing and then moving forward with that knowledge and that fresh slate. So it's a really good stone, really good all round stone to have in your collection. 
anyway i hope you liked that reading if you did give us a like share and consider subscribing and i'll see you in the next one